All right. What is going on? This is uh, our first emergency podcast. Um, yes. we, we usually do this Wednesday, Fridays. Um, but yeah, first emergency pro- uh, podcast just because a lot happened today. Uh, I'm Andrew Pasquini. Jason Aponte to my left or right. I still don't know. Uh, and I'm honestly too tired to care and figure it out. It's been a very long 24 plus hours uh, for 49er football for 49er twitter for 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 whatever you want to say um but we are here yes so i wore a bills hat for a reason because i would rather have people ask me about why i'm wearing a bills hat than ask me some question about the 49ers that i don't want to deal with uh (laughs) the the long the, the short answer is i like logos i like logos i have a lot of different hats i like i have hockey hats i don't even watch hockey like I just like logos, and the Bills have a very good logo. So that that's that's the reason. It has been a tough year, Ben. I appreciate it. Um. So we'll get to it all. We'll get we're, to it. We're, all. we're we're gonna get to it. Yeah. Um it, It's it's been an eventful day, and actually, let's start with uh, what might actually be the biggest news out of the day today that kind of got swept under. Um, are the 49ers playing on Thursday? Yes, I think so. Um, that's that's I mean, the plan right now. Right, as long as as see, it's so weird, right? Because they, you know, the the team, the 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 NFL did, you know, gymnastics to you know help out the the Chiefs and the Patriots when there you go when the yeah. Patriots when Cam had it, but um, AJ Dillon has it, so I mean, I, it's I I don't think that it's gonna, uh, you know, the thing is, it's hard to flex from Thursday to whatever day, so yeah, it, it, the the game's gonna be going. So for you people out there who are trying to be positive and put out there, hey, maybe they may give us our bye week this week. They're probably going to have to play on Thursday. Yeah, I, I'm curious. I mean, it just really comes down to what the pat. And I feel like I saw a tweet. It's been a weird day on Twitter, and I've just kind of done my best to ignore it. I feel like well, I saw... it's it's not been a weird day. Today's been Monday. It's been Monday. <laughs> the time. Came. Okay, so here, here's the tweet I was looking for. Um, Ian, it's a series of tweets, so bear with me. Ian Rappaport tweeted about an hour ago. Packers linebacker Kamal Martin. And running back Jamal, Jamal Williams, Williams are considered close contacts for running back AJ Dillon, who tested positive for COVID nineteen. Both yeah. did not practice today, and the league is determining if they're a high risk close contacts. Uh, and then I saw another one. Oh yes. Um, oh, okay. So maybe I just misread the tweet. Uh, Tom Pelissero of NFL Network tweeted, "If they're determined to be a high, uh, high risk con- close contacts, they won't be eligible to play Thursday." Okay. So I just misread the tweet. I thought maybe they. Uh, they said something about the, the the timing of the game, but never mind. Ignore me. I'm tired. It's I'm right. tired. It's, it's been a it's, long. It's been a long day. I mean, nothing really happened today or yesterday. Yeah. Um. So I guess let's let's start with the game. Uh, we don't want to dive into it too much. I don't think anybody really wants to talk much about that football game that happened yesterday. Um. So we're we're gonna keep it short because a lot did happen in 49ers world. Um. So, Jason, give me your, like, TLDR, too long, didn't read, too long, didn't watch kind of opinion on what happened yesterday with the 49ers. Um, team came out flat, didn't execute the game plan on both sides of the ball. You could tell that the the defensive um, game plan on the first two drives was to get three and outs and put the and put the 49ers in position to score points and, and, and take a lead in this game, um, which it sounds crazy, but the 49ers did actually lead in this game at one point, which doesn't even sound like that actually happened, but it did. The 49ers were winning this game seven to six. What's crazy is I don't believe you. And I watched the game. And now that you say that the Niners did have a lead in this game, yeah, they did. They sure did. They um, absolutely did. Oh my God. That was such a long football so, game. So so yeah, so so the first two drives are three and outs, right? And that's exactly what you're looking for, right? The 49ers had a chance to put, you know, two drives together where they got close and, and got zero points from it. They should have yeah. scored both times. Now, I I, I don't want to understate the importance of getting off to a fast start with your defense playing well and putting the pressure on the Seahawks to having to have to score. Um, it felt like after those two drives came up empty. We were in for a long, long day, and that's exactly what happened. So, I mean, you, we can nitpick everything else. I have blame to go around. Everyone gets this blame. Yeah. Kyle, Jimmy, Sala, everybody gets it. So, yeah, it, it just I like I I understand how twenty twenty works. If a team struggles, it's on the quarterback. That's typically how it works. I just feel like Shanahan deserves and like. 
like I, I just don't want this to come off that we're trashing this team because we're not. It was a bad game. The team just felt like they didn't come out hot. They didn't. They, they, in Seattle week, I'm in tired, Seattle man. Week, in yeah. Seattle week, you know, like you showed up like that. Like, come on, man. Like, it's it's ridiculous. I I had a feeling it was going to be a long game after that third and five option play. I still very confused what that was. I don't know. Like it just, he like, he, I, I feel like I saw a thing. Cause so I, I told you, I drove to Santa Rosa to watch the game with my dad. So I missed a lot of post game stuff. Um, but I feel like I saw a thing that like Shanahan recognized it was a zero blitz and he realized it didn't work. So like, why isn't he calling a timeout? So there's kind of small things like that. Um, I, I had a feeling it was going to be a long game after that third and five play. Um, no, I'm not. A, God, I, I maybe you know. I'm just going to switch the hat. I'm tired already. I'm, look, I'm not a Bills fan. I like logos. I have hockey hats. I don't watch hockey. Um, I like sports, guys. Am I not allowed to like sports? Um, so, I, I, listen. I don't want to say this is a bad 49er team because we we watched this this happen. In 2011, 2012, 2013, where there was very good 49er teams who went into Seattle and got their ass thoroughly handed to them. Going to Seattle is never easy. And I know it's a little easier yesterday considering there's no fans. Seattle's still a good team. And we could talk about how bad their defense is because it's a bad defense. And Nick Mullen showed that yesterday. I need to watch the all 22 before I really dive into it because I feel like the first drive, they tried to go into the center of the field quite a bit. Uh, they had a completion to Ayuk. Um, and then they had the play to Kittle that some people said he dropped. I think that's more Garoppolo threw it a little too far. It should be a ball he catches. Um, both can be true. Both the can ball, be true. Yeah, the ball had to be better and he had to catch that. Both can be true. But I feel like after that, they just kind of stopped going into the middle of the field. And 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 that might just be, be me not watching the All-22. But let me, let me say this about this game, and, and we could dive into other news. I like to keep notes during the games, go play-by-play, play, so I can kind of have an idea of, like, how many times a certain DB was uh, thrown towards or yep. kind of things like that. This is the – and I've been doing that since the year Garoppolo got hurt, so 2018. That was the first game I stopped midway through. Uh-huh. Uh, I stopped following. I, I really stopped paying attention halfway through the third quarter. Yeah, um, that game. You know, the game was was crazy, right? It was uh, it was thirteen six something like that uh, going into the half. It it might as well have been fifty five to six. Like that's how far that like the the ten point game. That don't don't let you know anybody looking from the outside in would say, oh look, the 49ers were in it. The 49ers were never in this game, really. You know, even like when they had their lead for a little bit, they did, but come on, you know, like I, they just the most comparable game, if you want to like I I because I agree exactly with what you're saying. Uh go look at the final score of the 49ers Rams game. The Niners won 24 to 16. It's technically a one possession game, but the Rams were never in that game. No, no, they weren't. Um, there's times where the final score lies. The Niners were never really in that game. Like even when it was seven to six, I'm I'm just sitting here like they should like it was it was one of those weird games early on where you sat there and like they're up seven to six. And I I, I was going back and forth. I was saying, man, they should be winning this game by a lot more. But then at the same time, I was like, man, Seattle's really kicking their ass for them to be up by one. So I was on both sides of that. Um DK Metcalf's good. Yeah, man, and I'm that's, not. Gonna, that's I'm another not gonna, thing I want to say. <laughs> right, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna kill Emmanuel Mosley for that because there's not no. really anybody that can guard no. DK Metcalf. Stop it. If if anything, I, I feel like there wasn't a lot of safety help over the top, but that's not the. There wasn't either. because they're not guys that you know. They, there's not really guys that can you know really do that. You know, when Jimmy Ward's on the field, like he's not that type of guy. He's not gonna erase all that stuff, man. But you know, I mean, yeah. Look, the Seahawks look good now, but waiting until the playoffs. The point is that they're gonna be in the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I, I would love for somebody to say that about the 49ers. Like they look good now, but wait till the playoffs. Did remember you not, when, we were, remember did when you not, we were pretenders? Did you did you not see my tweet today? I already called it. Dwayne Haskins is gonna hit Jordan Reed in week 17 to clinch the final playoff spot. 
I saw that. I closed out my app after that. <laughs> uh, I, I, fi- I figured a lot of Niner Twitter got to have bad takes today, so I figured I'd get one myself. I mean, honestly, if nobody can tell it that's a joke, then you know, then there's yeah. a there's a bigger issue going on. But, Although um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a new quarterback on the 49ers tomorrow or at any point. Not not in a it. not in a sense of a starting quarterback, in a sense of like if Garoppolo goes on the IR, I think Shanahan's gonna want a third option. Um, are we are we gonna do something positive? Yeah, why don't you start? Because I I need to th- I want to see where you start with this. Let's say, let's boom something positive. Go, Jason. Something positive. So everybody wants to say that Nick Mullins threw against prevent defenses. That's absolutely categorically wrong. Okay, Seattle didn't change up a thing. They were disguising blitzes. They were blitzing him. He threw the ball down the field. So don't let anybody tell you that Nick Mullins was throwing against a prevent defense. He actually was throwing against a defense that was trying to stop him. And what the 49ers should have been doing all game. Something positive. Boom, positive. Um, That Dre Greenlawn play from week 17 last year, that was pretty cool. Boom, positive. <laughs> Does that count? Does that work? That counts. It's something I'll count positive. It. That's a positive. Um, <sighs> yeah, I just um, – it, it was a football game, man. Like I, like I, I don't, I don't want to over break it down because a, we don't have the all twenty two yet, at least not that I'm aware of. It's out, and, it's out, but uh, there's not much on there. If you want to bash your head against the window and see a bunch of guys running free, then go ahead. Um, so I, I guess my question for you, because because you 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 pay more attention to this, because in my eyes, the untrained eye. I feel like the playbook opens up more for Mullins. Do you, do you see that, or is that just Mullins kind of trusting himself more than Garoppolo? It's a little bit of the same thing. Like I feel like there was a lot of calls that were very similar that were called for Jimmy Garoppolo, but he wasn't getting off of his first read, right? So um, it, it almost feels like on his reads, he's throwing to the first read in practice, and then in the game, he's just like, screw it, that's where I'm throwing the ball right now. Um, you know, obviously we find out that, that the injury is there or whatever, you know, but I think he was calling the game pretty consistently because those routes that Brandon Ayuk was coming back and yelling at Jimmy Garoppolo about on being open, um, Mullins was throwing the ball. Look at Ayuk's route running, right? That touchdown to Ayuk, that's all Ayuk, man. That's all Ayuk, bro. He's a baller. He's such a baller. He's such a baller. Uh, Sid, uh, I see you up there. I was looking it up. The trade deadline is November 3rd. So tomorrow, tomorrow, 1 p.m. Pacific time, 4 p.m. East Coast time. So that is so when the trade deadline is. Tomorrow is going to be full of not just football craziness, but craziness. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to see how tired I, 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 I can be, like we, we could talk about the other thing going on tomorrow and you can just see how exhausted I get. Um, but yeah, so we'll we'll dive into the trade deadline in a bit. We want we kind of wanted to um, we wanted to start with all the negative from yesterday and today, and then we'll talk about the trade the 49ers made because I think that is a positive. I think. Oh, hold it. up! Is Perk in here? Perk, what up, bro? Thank you for tuning in, man. Hi, Perk. He's about to get it. He's about to. Uh, he's about to get at us if we say some crazy stuff. So we got to make sure we're on point here. Uh, <laughs> click, c- click. Um, hypothetically you can make unlimited amount of trades like, yeah you no, can this isn't the, 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 this I, I know some fantasy leagues have like trade caps but like no in real life like if the niners hypothetically wanted to tomorrow they could flip their entire roster they're they obviously could. not going to i'm just using that as a very extreme example you have to remember too um you know the so the the quan deal um you know yes you know the the 49ers you know uh you know, lose somebody who is impactful as far as, um, you know, attitude and things like that on the defense. But the issue is, is that the 49ers have so little money that they can't even, if they wanted to call up Kevin White one more time from the practice squad, they wouldn't have the money to do it. Yeah. So one way or another, this had to happen. We'll we'll, we'll dive into the trade a bit more because I I have all good things to say. I just kind of want to get through the, the, the garbage that happened today and, and, do you have anything else you want to say about the Seahawks game? Because I no, um, no. I mean, honestly, the only really good thing I could say that that happens right after this is that the 49ers don't have time to dwell and sit on this win because yeah. they have to get ready immediately for Thursday. And um, I think that could be a good thing, right? Because if this team has to sit and stew and 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 look, we're only going to get one session with Kyle Shanahan and Salah this week, one, and that's yeah. tomorrow. That's it. They're not going to be in front of the cameras talking because that's just not how it's going to work. So you know what? Put your heads down, 
get to the game plan right now, figure out who's going to be there for this game because it's not going to be Kittle and it's not going to be Jimmy, and 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 figure out how to scheme this game o- away so we can get a win in here and, and at least keep things rolling a little bit. You know, it just it is what it is. Just flush it. Just flush the damn game and move on. Yeah, uh, that, that's that's really my take, and that's why we're not going to spend it. I mean, it's partially the game was that bad yesterday and partially because how much news kind of came across today. Um. So yeah, so so I guess we'll start with the bad news. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, I believe he aggravated the high ankle sprain, which we like. I just hate that word now. Yeah. Um, he's gonna be out at least. I think I saw six weeks. Um, at least six weeks. Um, yeah. And and if you need surgery, it could be more. I wouldn't be surprised if if he uh, played his last snap this season. As I cough. Um, yeah. And I'll dive into other takes I have later on. Uh, and it sounds like George Kittle's probably done for the season as well. Yeah. He's out eight weeks with a broken foot. Uh, I, right. I, th- I think it's a fracture in his foot. So yeah, fracture in his foot, eight right. weeks. Right. Um, so and that really changes the outlook on this season. I mean, you you could have said after the Seahawks game that they're four and four, maybe things crack right, and all of a sudden, um, you know, they're they're the seven seed. Um, I, th- I think today might have been the, the the final nail in the coffin almost for for at least playoff hopes for the 2020 season. But I don't know if that's just me being negative based off yesterday as well. What 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 do you think uh, in terms of the injury news today? I mean, honestly, man, it it the 49ers still could make the playoffs, right? But what what does that mean? Like, is this team prepared to make a run, right? Like, or or should this team be full on selling at the trade deadline, right? Like, it's it's weird. And I think the 49ers kind of are telling you what they think of their own season for them to make a move so quickly um, yeah. on Quan right after, you know, like it's like the next day right after this. And and um, so yeah, I mean, I think I think the 49ers are kind of telling you what they feel, how they feel, um, you know, moving forward. So I mean, yes, they can make the playoffs. But realistically, what is the goal for this team to make the playoffs, get a lower pick than they should, right? Like, so it's it's you know it's really weird right now. I've I, there's no way that this team's gonna lay down. That's not gonna happen. Like this team will not quit. They're not gonna stop. You know, playing the games don't stop. The NFL doesn't stop mm-hmm. just because you're banged up. Yeah. So the 49ers are gonna still have to keep playing games, and they're still gonna be playing hard. I expect them to to play a lot more desperate this week as well. So. You know, four and four in our division, you know, is is last place. But, you know, in any other division, this team isn't as bad. So I think we all need to put context to that, too, as well. And then, man, it's just the injuries are catching up, man. What are you supposed to do? Like, what can you do at this point? It's almost yeah. comical. I, I mean, the, the the Kittle one is just as big of a blow as the Bosa one. Um, just, just, just because Kittle is the Bosa of the offense, right? He's... He's the most important piece. He's the guy the offense pretty much runs through. Um, and I guess, I guess, in the most fitting way of how yesterday went, because um, the the play he made to catch the ball that he got hurt on, it's a damn impressive catch. And and I I, I kind of got excited because I'm like, hey, because he I think he had three targets up to that point. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, wow, look what happens when you throw the ball to George Kittle. And I was pretty amped. And then I saw him limping off the field. I'm like, yeah, of course. You know of what's course. funny? You know what's funny about that is um is Nick Mullins had two reads on that play. Um he had the underneath route, which was there, which is normally what would have happened. Jimmy would have just thrown that there, but yeah. he actually floated that ball up for Kittle. Now you can say, Oh, look, he got Kittle injured, but I'm talking about the throw and the placement and the read, right? So you got off your first read and then you went to him. So I, I think, uh, I think, I think that that was. So while people are upset because it got Kittle injured, I was like, wow, look at that throw. And then when you watch it on film, you're like, wow, look at him go through reads. It's almost like yeah. we're we're even shocked when quarterbacks do that now for us, just based off of what we've seen the last few weeks. Yeah, um, I'm interested to see where the offense goes from here. Um, you know, you, you could have your opinions on Garoppolo. Um, I, I, I'm a firm believer that the offense is worse without him. Of course. I, I, th- I think Garopp- Garoppolo is obviously the best quarterback on this team, on this roster. Sure. Um, and and, and I, I don't know how that's turned into a hot take, but it, it, it's turned into one apparently. Um, I, I'm curious. Th- this is when we're going to see how good of a head coach Kyle Shanahan is. Um, because, I mean, real, let, let's look at the facts of the Packer game. Mostert, one of their highest usage players, is out. Debo Samuel, one of their highest usage players, is out. Um, Kittle's going to be out. Garoppolo's out. Coleman's out. Coleman's out. Coleman's out. Um, 
So so we're going to see what Shanahan can pull with pretty much a backup roster, or at least backup weapons. The offensive line's still healthy, as I'm going to cough again. I don't know why I'm coughing so much. You want to say something while I cough? Yeah, I got you, man. Um, So, like, here's the thing, right? The Packers the Packers continue to be the team that they were last year, right? Like, exactly, yes. this, the, exactly the same exact team from last year that can get bullied and run all over, right? Dalvin Cook just went crazy all over them. The problem is, is that that kind of gets limited now that Kittle's not there. We all know the numbers, and we all know the stats. Um, when Kittle's there and when he's not as far as um, yards per carry and how this offense runs. So um, it stinks that this had to happen right now because even yeah. after this loss, if Kittle's there next week, the 49ers still have a way to beat them just running the ball right now. So it's um, it's a little bit concerning that this happened right now. So the 49ers for sure can win this game. Yeah. It just becomes less likely now <clears throat> that you've lost your best run blocker. Kyle Shanahan seems to have the Packers figured out. Yeah. Um, because I mean, if you, if you, if you consider, uh, the year Garoppolo tore his ACL, they almost beat them in Lambeau on oh, Monday yeah. night with CJ Beathard and, with and our, Beathard. so, but you know, the secret though, right? Remember you, you called it out. Coach Shanahan has got to go all black and go back swaggy like that. Like that's, 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 such that's, a that's good it. Look. That's such it. a good <laughs> look. Um, yeah. So, so I, I think this is, it's still a winnable game. And I mean, what what did Minnesota do yesterday against the Packers? They just ran the run, ball down the run, 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 run. And the, run. And the Packers couldn't figure they, they couldn't stop it. No. So so I, I expect to see the same a little bit with the Niners, and we'll, and we'll dive in Wednesday. We we still plan to have a show Wednesday. It's crazy. We were talking about not having two, but look at us with two now. Well, what's funny is so so a little behind the scenes, right? Um, <laughs> we uh, me me Jason and I we had a conversation on Friday. We're like, hey, if the if the Niners beat the Seahawks, we'll. We'll do a podcast Monday. We'll, we'll talk about the game because everybody's going to be excited um, about the win. So we were like, we're going to do a second podcast. And that's why I tweeted uh, yesterday. You, you tweeted something about the game. And that's why I tweeted. I said, hey, so we'll, t- we'll talk Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. Like we uh, were, as kind was... of a way to confirm, like, no, we're not going to talk Monday. We're not going to talk today. Uh, and then, of course, every – and we we, t- we we texted each other after the Quan trade. I'm like, hey, do you want, do you want to do an emergency pod for the Quan trade? And you're like, yeah, let's do it all in. And then all the news came out after, and we're just, I'm just like, I don't even want to do it anymore now, but we already announced it. So, um, so we're here. We're here on Monday. Oh my God. Is that 49ers legend Alfred Morris on my screen playing for the New York Giants tonight? Good God. All right. Sorry. Oh my God. Alfred <laughs> Morris got, <laughs> hey man, it was a real bad day for four, former 49ers today. Oh my uh, goodness. The, the so mantra. Bruce, Bruce Miller, um, yeah. Demontre Moore, uh, who played against us and had a sack, uh, got busted for PEDs. Yeah. Um, this is a great one. Sign Josh Rosen off of a practice squad. Yeah, I don't think I don't think they'd have to trade for him. No, you can sign him off the practice squad for the Bucks. They haven't been protecting him. Yeah, and as I said, like I, I you know I made a Dwayne Haskins joke today, but I wouldn't be surprised if you see the Niners make a move for a quarterback uh, at some point this week because they're going to put Garoppolo on the IR. Yeah, and and Shanahan feels like Shanahan's a guy who wants to have three quarterbacks on the roster. And I, do they have a quarterback on the practice squad? Actually, and I'm gonna look it up now because no. I'm curious. They don't. Um. So so I I, I wouldn't be surprised. But okay, Reepa, I got a question. Just just curious. Okay. Uh oh. You you say hell no to Rosen. My my response is why not? What like what what what's what's it gonna hurt? Because. We know what Mullins is. We know what Beathard is. Why not just see what somebody else has to offer? I, I like that. That's kind of my my question on that. Is 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 why not? Well, here's um, my thing too. Here's my thing too. I I don't know that uh, like I can properly evaluate Josh Rosen, considering where he came from. Like Arizona was a was a complete dumpster fire. Um, the same thing with uh, Miami, right? Um, so I don't know. Look, can Rosen be bad for sure? But we can bring him in for nothing and then see what happens. You know, I mean, and if he's trashed, then get rid of him. Doesn't hurt anything. That's yeah, not- like, that's kind of my take. Okay, I'm looking at the practice squad. No, they do not have a quarterback. Okay. Just wanted to confirm. I try I believed you, but I was already doing it. So that's cool. Um, so so yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Niners pull in a uh who would you rather have? Stafford or Darnold? What? what? Stafford or Darnold? Because that's that's out there. Kali's Kali, out there. It's out there. It's out there. Um See, again, I can't properly evaluate Sam Darnold. He's stuck with yeah. that idiot. You know, like, I, I, I don't I don't know. You know, Sam Darnold could be good. Stafford could be good. You know, but, you know, Stafford's got, you know, so I don't know, man. Yeah. Well, um, and, and I know we talk about the cap space a lot and with the trade. 
they got rid of him for two rookies on two different teams. Yeah, yeah it, like, that's, like that's, I, I understand what Josh Rosen's past is, yeah. but it it just it doesn't hurt at this point. There is a um, world that he there is a world where Josh Rosen stinks. There is a world there, but yeah, you know, we, at this point, at this point, what are we doing? Like, we why why wouldn't we just take a look at him, see what happens? And and the only reason he's not on the Cardinals anymore is is because they got if they never hire Cliff Kingsbury, like like you want to dive into a totally different universe. If the Cardinals never bring in Cliff Kingsbury, Kyler Murray is not on the Cardinals, which means right. Nick Bosa is on the Cardinals, which means the Niners have Quinn and Williams or Josh Allen or whoever you want, and Josh Rosen is the quarterback for the Cardinals still. So like it, it's it had I don't think it has nothing to do with with the talent Rosen has, and now he's with the Buccaneers, and why why would the Buccaneers need him on the active roster? They have Tom Brady, and they um, have Blaine Gabbert. And they, oh, does Blake Everett still? Oh my God, I'm too tired for this. Man. <laughs> I'm too tired. Um, so like, like, listen, I understand what your opinion is on Rosen. I like, I get if you say he sucks, if he's good, just why not? Why not have a roster spot for him at least? Like, I'm not saying sign Josh Rosen tomorrow and have him be the starter. On, I guess he'd be the starter in in week against the Saints because he wouldn't be able to play for the Niners this week. Um. I'm not calling for that. I'm just saying the Niners are going to sign. They're going to bring in a third quarterback one way or the other. That's all. That's all yeah. I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not advocating. And for Jordan, yeah, look, Mullins is better than Rosen. Yeah, like like yeah, I'm not. Right. Yeah, I'm not advocate. I'm not advocating for Josh yeah. Rosen to be the starter next week. Yeah. Um. Although I I, I did want to ask you this: Have I ruined you to a point? Uh, Jason, that when the report came out that the Niners were trading Quan Alexander to the Saints for a pick and a player, did I, I thought it was Jameis. Did, did I get you to that point? I yet? was like, oh my god! I was like, oh my god! They sent us Jameis. Yeah, I, I was kind of <laughs> hoping. It, I, I knew it wasn't going to be Jameis, but I was kind of hoping it was Jameis. I saw um, people saying, uh, uh, "Oh, they, they're sending us back Emmanuel Sanders." I'm like, he has COVID. They're not sending I, him anywhere. Yeah, I, I would be wearing my Florida State hat, but um, I would be yelled at apparently because if I don't wear a Niner hat, it's bad. Um, yeah, that's what you get. I, I, I changed it because everybody – they're going to get real mad at the Red Sox shirt, but I'm also not a Red Sox fan. I like sports, guys. Um, no, so um, so do, do we want to – I mean, if you guys – I guess this is the point where I'm going to throw in if you guys have any questions for us. Let's uh, do it. Sh shoot them our way. But let's talk about the trade that happened today. Uh, the San yeah. Francisco 49ers sent Quan Alexander to the New Orleans Saints in exchange for – oh, my God, I'm drawing a play. Kiko Alonso and a conditional – fifth round pick um and i i, I don't want to dive in and t talk about what people's opinions on on quan alexander are i don't want pe i don't i don't want to dive in and talk about how he was overpaid because that is not his fault one bit the, the, the niners offered him a contract he signed the contract if you want to complain about his 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 contract bring it up with the niners this I is a good question and this is a good question i don't know what the condition is i have is not it, seen that i'm gonna look is it, it is it is it that Quan has no? I don't even think it's out. Is it that Quan has to play a certain amount of games, snaps, something like that? Like I don't know what that that condition is, and that's a great point, Sid. I don't know. I'm gonna really I'm don't. gonna I'm gonna read the Athletics article about the trade. And Do y'all know when trade. Kiko Alonso will play? He's hurt, right? Um, honestly, like Kiko Alonso is pretty much just like a throw in, and they were just like whatever, you know, like and 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 he's gonna be a depth piece. So you know, if that was the condition for them to take Quan's contract, then it's like okay, just send him over here. It, it'll be fine. He has an expiring deal, so it, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, honestly. and and and, the, and and we we've answered questions about um, what the Niners are gonna do with the trade deadline, and this isn't what I expected them to do. I didn't, I didn't expect. I like. Did, have we even heard whispers about Quan Alexander being on the block? Uh, so apparently it all came out today that since the Super Bowl, the 49ers have been on and off um, with uh, the Saints <laughs> and certain teams about it. I just I, I you see again, as soon as the loss happens, then automatically it's like, OK, now we move them, you know, so this that's, is, that's, that's and, and this is another thing um, we talk about the 49ers, because any time. You know, a big name gets traded, or anytime a big name's available, like Jamal Adams, like Odell Beckham, like players like that. And there's always, oh, the Niners are interested, and then they never get them. And now all of a sudden, the Niners trade Quan Alexander after no whispers. The Niners don't let anything out. This nah. isn't Trent Balky. This isn't Trent Balky's Niners. Nothing gets leaked. Um, but yeah, so so Kiko Alonso, I don't think he's going to to play. 
much if at all for the 49ers what this was was this was a trade for an expiring contract and and i'm sure there's a lot i'm, I'm reading tweets right now uh the 49ers will take on 6.9 in dead money nice next year and will have wound wound up paying about 23.5 million for 13 games was very risky and surprising deal when signed uh so smart to bail and save a few dollars for the season uh, a very interesting trade for the Saints should only owe Alexander about $3 million for the year. And they'll also save about 900 k by getting rid of Alonzo, so just $2 million. Uh, Alexander has only $2 million in injury protection left, so they can walk away next year with no cap issue. So it, it was a good trade for the Saints. But what the big thing for the Niners is, is and, and this is just me looking at the basic numbers. I'm not going to try and pretend like I am a cap expert because I am nowhere near that. Uh, the Niners owed the the Niners backloaded the Quan Alexander deal uh, quite a bit. They owed him twenty four million next or twenty four million combined for the last two years of the contract in terms of cap hit. So what that does is that now opens up in my mind twelve million dollars. And I think uh, Chris Biederman of the Sack B tweeted out that the Niners had about nine million dollars in cap space after the season. So that goes up to about twenty-one million. And now you're looking at guys the Niners need to extend. Fred Warner, he's a guy that that should be looking at an extension. Trent Williams, he's a guy that should be looking at an extension. So now the Niners are opening up cap space. And now, if you really want to get into it, this is my Garoppolo take. If you do choose to get rid of him, you are there opening up. 24 more million dollars or 24 million more dollars in cap space because I think Garoppolo's cap hit next year is 26, but if they release him, his dead cap hit is 2 million. So now you're looking at the Niners might actually have some money to play with to extend guys. They're going if they get rid of Garoppolo, I don't think it's going to be a free agent signing because I don't think I to me it wouldn't make sense that you're going to turn around and get rid of Garoppolo and that cap hit to sign a Kirk Cousins and take a massive cap hit. I think if they get rid of Garoppolo, I think we're looking at a first round pick on a quarterback. Yeah, the 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 quarterback for this team, if they decide to move off of Jimmy, the quarterback for this team going forward is not on this team. Yes. Right now. It's not on this team. That's it. So I think it's it's pretty much it's pretty much, you know, here's the good thing about this, right? If the 49ers want to move off of Jimmy, right? His play is tied to this ankle. So his trade value isn't exactly in the basement, right? As people are saying. Um, there is somebody out there that'll look and say, his ankle was messed up. We can get him over here and we can, you know, like people, you know, his value's low. But it's not in the basement because he has this ankle injury, which everybody's attributing to with the play. You know, uh, so I, I, the 49ers have an interesting decision to make. I'm not going to, like I said, here's what I'll say about this. I am not on either side of Garoppolo being here, being not being here. What I do know is he's the quarterback of this team and the best quarterback on this team. What I will say is this is the last year that Jimmy Garoppolo will be on this team. That's it. That's it. Yeah, and and, and I – I don't want to speculate. Listen, if you want our opinions on the Jimmy Garoppolo situation in terms of where he's going to be next year, come watch us in four months for the offseason shows. Uh, yeah. We're we're not we're not going to sit here and speculate what they're actually doing. I'm just talking at hypotheticals that if they that's get, not a bad idea though. That's, that's not, not a bad, bad idea. idea. That's I, not a bad idea. Um, I, I I don't have a problem with that idea of him yes. being there. Being if if you want to be a bridge and you want to have somebody you know have somebody sit behind, yeah, I'm not I'm all with it. But that cap number has got to come down. Yep, and, and they're gonna have to get creative. And 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 this the deal today was their first step of getting the cap number. And may, and who knows they may another possible outcome is um is um maybe restructuring a contract. I know they've already done it. Maybe they try and restructure it again and see what they can do. I don't let I don't think I, I, I don't think that's gonna happen because at some point a player is gonna sit back and say, Why am I taking less money when I could? But then again, at the same time, if the Niners cut him, they don't owe him that much. So it, it, it works either way. I don't want to speculate much on what they're gonna do with Garoppolo. I'm just pointing out the fact that they freed up twelve million dollars in cap space for next season and they have an opportunity to free up twenty four more million. That's really yeah where I wanted to go with that. Right. <sighs> the show was more fun to do when we were talking about wins. I'm just going to throw that out there. For sure. I mean, look, everybody, everybody, people don't understand that, right? So a lot of people got into the content creating game last year during a Super Bowl run. It's super easy to be excited about this team when things are going well. Yeah. Well, we're going to find out real quick 
who are the ones who are really about this content uh, because it's not easy to, to wake up. Like today, I, you know, I was on a few shows today. It's the same questions over and over. People, people are, are anxious all the time on the, on the timeline right now, arguing with each other. It's just like, it's a, it's, it's a strange time. It's just, this dud couldn't have happened uh, at, at a worse time against a worse team. Yeah, Seriously. yeah, we 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 really wanted to believe that after the Rams and Patriots games that hey, this team's back, and now all of a sudden we're just kind of back to the feeling of after the Dolphins game of just they 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 didn't stand a chance yesterday. Yeah, um, it sucks. It sucks, man. It does. Um, I think I, I think also what I learned is that I think I'm a little bit dead on the inside. Um, I think the Super Bowl broke me because I don't feel anything. I don't feel yeah. sad, you know, like, I, I don't know, man. I, I think that once you've been hurt the way that I was hurt when I was in Miami for that game. Oh, you went? Else. I didn't know you went. Did you go to the I, game? I didn't, no, I didn't go to the game. I just went oh. to Miami. Screw okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, if I would have went to the game, I would have been in jail. Um, But, yeah, I, I went <laughs> yeah. down to Miami for it. So it's like once once that happens and you had your heart ripped out, like, nothing else can hurt you anymore. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Big Dez, uh, can they restructure Ward's contract? They, they hypothetically can restructure anybody's contract. They can. They can. But here's the thing. Um, again, why would he do that? Right? Like, you only have a certain amount of pay time, like, a pay, times to be paid, right? And it's like, you know, why would you do that unless they're going to outright release you? So, I, I don't know, man. You know, there's a lot. The 49ers have to do a lot of wheeling and dealing with a lot of people's contracts. You know, the Jimmy Ward one is one that people felt like that they went overpaid um, for, you know. So, it's... uh. You know, it's it's uh this is gonna be a long this is gonna be a long discussion that's gonna continue and and I think that the the more that we get the results and the information from what's happening in the games, the more we'll start to figure out the overall direction with this team going forward in the next year. Or so, um, and then actually also too, uh, Daniel, they have not restructured Jimmy's contract. Did I just make something up? I feel like I've then did they restructure Jimmy's contract? Did I make mm -hmm. something up? No. No, they, they didn't. Did. Okay, then it was, I it was D Ford. They did D Ford, and they maybe did it was D Ford. They shifted maybe, or they shifted maybe I got people. Around. I got my. I apologize, and I, I I got people mixed. And up. they did, and they did. Um, Lincoln Tomlinson's too. Lincoln Tomlinson's. They 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 converted it over to a signing bonus or something like that. So it created okay. some cap. Yeah. Okay, then I then I got it. I apologize. I got that mixed up. Are oh, you good? Um, yeah. I just it, it's gonna be interesting to see where everything goes from here because I mean, it, it, it's just crazy. Like that's why. That's why I really hate it when, and like, obviously nothing good. Like this isn't me talking bad about the fan base because I, I don't blame you one bit for saying, Hey, they almost won a Super Bowl last year. They're going to be back. This is why you can never make that assumption. I it's hated that. I hated that. I yelled at 49 fans in Miami right after the game. Oh, don't worry. Run it back. Yeah. Run it back. Do you understand what this league is and how hard it is to do that? Do you understand that there's no repeat champions and how long? or people that even make the Super Bowl back-to-back -back years, like, it's a nice idea, and I think the front office got complacent with that idea of just running it right back with the same team and getting back to where they were. But now you see how hard it is when things like this happen, you know, and, like and, when all the injuries happen. And that's what makes Harbaugh's run so much more impressive. Like, the right. fact they made three consecutive NFC Championship games, it's hard. This is not easy. The football's not easy. This is this. One thing goes wrong, and I mean, I mean, you look at, like, I guess a bad example is, like, the Cowboys, right? Like... You, you could pretend that, like, I know that defense is horrendous. The second Dak Prescott goes down, that team went from, hey, they could stumble into winning the, the NFC East, and now it, it, there's just no chance. Like, and just one bad thing happens. And and the Niners, they took that one bad thing, and they just blew the door open. We're like, no, we're going to have, like, nine bad things happen. And, and you know, you want to hear the scariest thing about this season, Jason? I just realized – we're only at the halfway point. Yeah, yeah. It's we, uh, we've only played half the games. Yeah, it's week eight. It's week eight. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I mean, but here's the thing, right? Look again. There is no break. The NFL doesn't say, "Oh, you're super banged up. We're gonna send you the Jets instead of playing the Packers." Figure it out and keep going. This league's not gonna stop for you because you're banged up. That's it. And I'm tired of of you know the. Oh, we're so banged up. Yeah, we are. We are. We are. Everybody is. But come on. Like, you know, like, like make a good showing. Go, go forward with the team that you have. Coach these guys up. And that's the part that I get mad about Kyle this week. Cause I feel like Kyle was just like, Yeah, whatever. Watch me, watch me not uh watch me not scheme all this open for him. Watch me not cover up these flaws. Watch me let him let him sink or swim by himself. 
You know, like, and that's sometimes where I get my complaints about Shanahan. He's a genius. Yes. Is he a dick sometimes? Yes. Sorry. Didn't mean to curse, but yeah. No, 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 no. Sorry. He, um, he, he acts like a jerk sometimes, and 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 you can tell. Like the other, the other thing is, is right after the pre the press conference, right? What did he say? Oh, what happened with Jimmy Garoppolo's injury? Oh, you're gonna have to ask him about that. What? What? Bro, stop talking about your quarterback that way. Yeah. Only Bill Belichick is gets away with talking to his quarterback in any way and having that. You know, like, dude. Put your arms around the guy, it's, and that, to me, it's clear that he doesn't want him. These, these are, these are th like, and and it could just be a Shanahan thing where he's not not great at hiding things, which is just is fine, right? Like people, but but sometimes you just have to play the press game, back up your quarterback, and then have these conversations behind closed doors. Bro, that's what I'm saying, man. Like I like, there's nothing wrong with coach speak. Sometimes those stupid cliche coach uh, cliches, they work. Yeah, and 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 I yeah I I agree. Sorry, I was I was looking something up because Jimmy Jimmy Garoppolo up here, Jimmy G. Um, my dad mentioned something. Apparently, the NFL is considering a sixteen team playoff if games are missed due to COVID. I what? I, I missed this as well, but I I was googling it. Um, and according, uh, a loss of NFL regular season games could result in an expanded playoff field. While no NFL games have yet been canceled due to the uh, coronavirus pandemic, the NFL Competition Committee expects to present a resolution to the league, the owners, uh, league's 32 owners, based on having a 16 team playoff if games are lost due to COVID 19, according to ESPN's fans Chris Mortensen. Legit, let me ask, let me ask the people that are in here in this quote because I want to, I want to see in the chat. Please answer this question for me. Realistically, I know we're all 49ers fans. Realistically, do the 49ers make a playoff run and get bounced in what the first second round, right? Because they're missing so many pieces. Or do you want a higher draft pick? Come on. Like, okay, what well, is it? I, I have a hot take on that. Go ahead. <laughs> if the Niners somehow make the playoffs, the timetable, if there's no surgery for Garoppolo, is six weeks. The timetable for Kittle is eight weeks. So now you're going into the playoffs with a hypothetically 100% healthy offense, uh, barring injuries. And Jesus, like we can't bar injuries at this point. But let's just let's just play the like no injuries ever exist again. Okay. You you could be, uh, and I'm mainly playing devil's advocate, right? I just want to like talk about this. Is is if 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 we p play the 100% good luck on health we're talking about a healthy offense obviously bosa is not coming back obviously you know you know certain pieces aren't going to be coming back but if i told you that the niners get garoppolo back and kittle back for the playoffs and i'm saying 100 percent healthy garoppolo 100 percent healthy garoppolo none of this limping none of this is he hurt isn't he hurt i'm talking 2019 version of jimmy garoppolo do you feel more confident I mean, I would because anything can happen. I mean, Nick Foles won a damn Super Bowl, so you know, like that—that that doesn't mean that you know that it, it's just—it's just realistically, right? Like, like, can you can you really see them making your like? I mean, here's the thing, though, and this is and this is where I get caught being back and forth with this discussion myself because I haven't figured it out. But I'm looking at the NFC. Seattle's Seattle winning yesterday doesn't make me think that they're good now or that they're great, right? They're a good football team, but they're not exactly like light years ahead of us the saints are are whatever the packers are the same team from last year the rams are trash arizona can be beat i'm trying to figure out where exactly in the nfc besides the bucks should we be really so and the bucks right now are losing to the giants i'm trying to figure out who exactly the 49ers should be scared of if they were to make the playoffs right so this is the part that even i myself am going back and forth on it's like you know, if this team finds a way to get hot, it's about who gets hot getting into the playoffs. And remember, there's going to be no fans. There's no home field advantage. So toss all that out. You're going to have to win on the road almost every week. And even if you're playing at home, you're playing on the road because there's no sort of no some no uh, home field advantage, none. So it's like, if there's too much here. So if we hype, if if we let's just let's pretend that we 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 have breaking news: the NFL has added an eighth playoff team each seed or each conference. Let's just pretend. Right. The Niners are currently nine seed, one game behind the Bears. One game behind the Bears. So are they better than the Bears? 
with with as they currently stand, as they currently stand today, is this 49er team better than the Bears? They better be. And yes, I think they are. As it currently stands, are they better than the Rams? Yes. As it currently stands, are they better than the Buccaneers? I'm just listing the teams in front of them. The in Bucks terms of wild card. The Bucks that's tougher because the Bucks actually have a really good defense, but they're they, they, it's not a gap. It's not like a, it's not like us against you know like last. It's not 2019 Niners or the Jets. That's not the gap. That's not the gap. And then and then the last one would be the is the Niners as they stand better than the Cardinals slash Seahawks? Depends who went who's in second place in this division. So we're re- realistically talking about a Niner team because I'm gonna I'm personally I'm gonna put in the playoffs as of this second. Six teams are shoe ins to me, and that is the Seahawks, the Packers, the Saints, whoever the hell wins the NFC East because you have to put one of them in. The Eagles. We'll, we'll call it the Eagles. I'll put the Buccaneers in, so I'll say five are guaranteed right now. The Bucs are playoffs. in. Yeah, the Bucs are in. So you're talking about three playoff spots between, as of right now, the Cardinals, the Rams, the Bears – I'll throw the Lions in there, and I'll throw the Panthers in there, just and just the, because it's too early to really eliminate those teams. And the 49ers still have games with the Rams, with with Arizona, and with uh, Seattle and yeah. New Orleans. So if it's gonna start, it's got to start Thursday. The, the, it, it has to start right away. Like this isn't a thing where they can they can lose to the Packers, they can lose to the Saints, and then all of a sudden we're like, oh, we can turn it around. No, this has to start right now. And I listen. I know it's uncertain. I am not sitting here saying that the Niners are going to make the playoffs in an eight team field. I am not saying that. I am saying that there is a very outside shot they can because just because of the sheer amount of teams that are making. We're talking about half of each conference is making the playoffs if there is an eighth team added. But then when you get to the playoffs, you hypothetically have a healthy Garoppolo and you hypothetically have a healthy um, George Kittle, a healthy Mostert, a healthy offense hypothetically. So, yes, is it going to be a long, hard road to make the playoffs as it currently stands right now? Absolutely. But if they get in, they could be healthy. Listen – I'll put I'll put my standpoint out right now because I'm saying a lot of this in they just, can. To be, just to be a devil's advocate. I would say percent chance the Niners make the playoffs at this second. I'm gonna say 25%. I was gonna say 35%. Um, but here's so the let, thing. Let, let's middle it out and call it a one third chance, 33% right. chance. So here's the thing though, but we just we, the more I talk through it, the more I start to feel like you know, as long as the 49ers don't play like they did. <laughs> yesterday that they're going to be in all these games. Like I said, they win on Thursday, then everything changes and everything all of a sudden becomes, because who's after them? It's the saints. And then it's right back to the Rams again, right? Uh, they come off the buy, And I think oh, it, it's, no, it's the Rams, the buy, then the Rams then the bills. And the, then all of a sudden it gets a little easier because you go back to back Washington football team, Dallas, Dallas. And right. then you go Arizona, Seattle. Hey, look, Crazier things have happened. Nick Foles won a Super Bowl. Okay, let, let's let's put this in just absolute positive, okay? Let's keep being positive. I like it. Let's pretend the 49ers beat the Packers. Okay. That drops the Packers to 5-3, and three, moves the Niners to 5-4. and four. Now let's say they beat the Saints. That moves the Niners to 6-4. and four. That probably puts them in the top eight if we're going to say top eight teams make the playoffs. Right. Six and four going into the bye week. Then you got. Then you have the Rams. Okay, I, and that's where I'm going to stop my hypothetical. I'm just saying, if you're six and four somehow going into the Rams, you can't pretend like it's not a possibility. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's out there. It's out there. See the thing. See. The thing that's got me at least feeling like it's possible is that I've watched all these other teams play, right? Like yeah. right now, the Bucks are losing to the New York Giants. What's seven that? Score? Seven to three. Is this, is it still seven to three. Okay. Seven to three. But the 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 Giants are are, are driving, and um, so, uh, you know, the Seahawks again. That game was laid out for us to win. You know, it just took too long for the offense to get in um in motion. Um. You know, uh, the Rams, we, like we said, that game wasn't as, as close. The Cardinals, we completely beat ourselves in that game. Um, mm-hmm. The Saints, uh, they, they really can't push the ball down the field. Like Michael Thomas still hasn't played. There's a lot going on right now. Week to week, week to week. Every single week, 
beat the person in front of you, and it looks like the 49ers are going to have a really good shot at controlling their own destiny because they're playing all the teams that are right in front of them that they're mm-hmm. going to have to move over and jump over. So win your games. Win and, your bi- game. and Big Des, we're not we're not trying to get your hopes up. We're just playing. Yes, we are. Oh, yes, yeah, we sure. Are. Jason is. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate on this. Yes, we are. No, yes, we are, because we want you guys tuning in and, and, and seeing how, you know, how happy we are after wins. Hey, no, hey, listen. it's there. It's there. It's right there in front of them, right? So if this team comes out on Thursday and punches Green Bay right in the face, the narrative switches. Mm-hmm. It completely switches. So let's see, man. Nick Mullins is going to have his shot again, right? And it's crazy. One good, one bad game, and we just tossed him aside, including myself. But what happens if he comes out and he plays well this week? Listen, Kirk Cousins I'm, was throwing the ball on them. I'm just gonna say this. Let's exactly. Just, let's just, get on the day. The trains in the station. You got to get on because they're not selling tickets at any other station. You get on here. Can I? I'll say this: if they can keep their head above water for when Moster gets back. That's the thing. I think when most of it, if Debo's able to play against the Saints and we have a win and we're moving that way, and then most of it winds up getting healthy, uh, Debo Debo is more important to this offense than anybody ever knew. Yeah. It's so crazy how throws beyond the line of scrimmage when Debo's not there, the offense goes non-existent. Crazy. Yeah. Um, and and, uh, and, and, I and I've you, and I've, I, made, and, and I've the same thing does. I've made I've made my opinion very clear on this. I think Raheem Mostert is the offensive system. Yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, I don't think it's a coincidence that this team puts up a lot of points when Mostert's in there, and yeah. they struggle to move the ball when he's not. Yeah, um, um, here's here's something I think. Here, I think regardless, uh, I think that we're not going to see Jimmy this year anymore. I don't think, man. I really don't. I don't think so. I think this is it. I think th- I think especially if Mullins plays well. I think this is it. Honestly, I don't know, man. I, I it's so uncertain right now. I really. I... Is. I I'm going to I'm going to say I'm going to say no to that yeah. because you saw how quick Shanahan oh, so. was to pull Mullins against the Eagles and bring in Bethard. Mm. The only time he's pulled Garoppolo is due to health concerns. Right. So I think Shanahan and and, and listen, uh, my opinion, I don't know why I'm wearing my headphones like this. Um my 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 opinion is then my opinion could easily change on this if Mullins does win a full g- few games, but I'm saying at this point if Nick Mullins gets the Niners to a point to a playoff spot, I think Garoppolo is still the starter in a hypothetical playoff game. So here's the thing, right? Mar- Mullins was garbage against the Eagles. That was one game, right? So CJ Beathard almost beat the Packers in Green Bay. Um, it's not crazy if the 49ers <laughs> run the ball all over the Packers and and limit what Mullins has to do. It's not crazy. The yeah, Packers can't. The Packers can't stop a nosebleed. Nick, Nick Mullins isn't going to beat the Packers. If the 49ers beat the Packers, it's going to be the run game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And also, too, I'm a con- – wait, what what'd I say? I don't know. I'm not trying to be funny. Is this, is this a comedy show? No. Um, J- uh, listen, Melissa, I, I understand what you're saying about that, but I think, yes, I, 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 I whether Kyle does want Jimmy back or not, I, I fully – I. That could be a thing. I think the the driving factor of whether Garoppolo's here or not is the twenty four million dollars in cap space they can save. That's I think that's the driving factor. Right. That's um, all the issue, right? So like I think that's the reason that he's held to this high standard. It's like, man, twenty seven million dollars. It's like you know, it's time for you to lift up your. It's time to lift your franchise up when, well, when that's, it's time. You know? That that's a point I wanted to make about Quan Alexander. Is Quan Alexander is a very solid football player. Yeah. We always compared him to that contract, and that's not his fault. That's what the Niners offered him. He chose to sign it. And it's the same thing that we said about Solomon Thomas, right? Like he didn't draft himself high. Yeah, no. You know, like Eric, Eric, Eric Armstead. It's not Eric Armstead's fault that he got offered the contract they gave him. Right. That you they know, decided to like pay that. him. So, like, like I understand, like, being upset. Quan Alexander is a very good football player. He is. Quan Alexander is a very good football player. And I think we're going to see his importance in the locker room being missing. We already saw Jarek McKinnon tweet his his displeasure with DJ Jones, too. DJ Jones. Like, like I understand the football business side. Like, the, the, from a business standpoint, the Quan Alexander trade makes a ton of sense. From a locker room standpoint, it's a little questionable. It's a little yeah. questionable because he was a leader. I mean, the Hot Boys was his thing. The yeah. Revenge Tour was his thing. Like, like Quan Alexander was a big part of this locker room, and it makes sense why they moved him. But it also, you know, in terms of locker room impact, it, it, it doesn't. So Yeah, I mean, and then the thing is, is that he's great in coverage, right? Like, great. Yeah. 
Um, mm-hmm. And that's the thing green law is not good in. So it's like, you know, when, when we say that, you know, oh, we have green law, it's not because we, you know, green law is exactly the better player right now, but he's the much cheaper one um, he's at this much point. much cheaper and he has a higher ceiling. Right. So that's the thing. It's like, okay, can we fix him in this way? Like, you know, you know, and let's put it out there. Dre didn't really have a good game this week. Uh, you know, he took a lot of odd angles and, you know, but you know, that, that was, there was plenty of things that I could, I could get upset. Like, you know, uh, the play with Al Shair not going to not, not, you know, Eric Armstead has contained DJ Dallas is running past him and he passes him off as if he's in his own. That infuriated me. And, and Jason Verrett went right over and got right in his face about it. It's like, dude, that's a simple call. That's not something complicated. All you had to do was stay with your man and let Eric Armstead contain Russell Wilson. And it was just, it was small and it was indicative of how the team was playing. And, and the coaching had to be like, you know, has to be held to, the, you know, hold their feet to the fire a little bit for how this team came out in, in, in Seattle week, super flat. Yeah. So, um, listen, I'm going to get positive. Go something positive. Go, go. You got well, something positive. I was going to say something positive. We go. started, we started this podcast talking about how we're not, excited and we somehow ended convincing ourselves that hey this niner team can make the playoffs boom positive boom positive um other positives um those jerseys that they wore yesterday is the last time that we're gonna see them so enjoy that um it's still that the coldest like jer- negative. still coldest jersey in the league though still coldest jersey in the league it does feel um, like a negative Ooh, positive the the aesthetic of the Niners red jerseys with the Packers yellow and white and green it's real pretty yeah that that's something I dude I like jersey matchups like that the, last week when the Falcons played um Jamichael Hasty got a touch I started him in fantasy yesterday that was that was nice cool. job I started um, McKinnon and I got I got rewarded um um I I, I really really like uh jersey like aesthetics like when the falcons played the lions last week the falcons wore their their gradient jerseys the red into the black and the lions wore their grays and it was just not good but like go go back and watch um niner packer playoff games when it was far versus young you can't tell me that's not a pretty jersey combination where the niners and the the niner red and the packer yellow just pop right um let's see uh it, this is true right uh you know four and four you know, been in all the games except for the Miami game and the Seattle game, man. It's true, man. I mean, you know, um, but I like this, man. I like the, I like you guys, you know, you guys are getting me hyped now. Yeah. Um, like, you know, this is going to be, this is going to be a long, this is going to be a long few days, you know? So, uh, you know, I mean, do we think, uh, Tico is going to be okay? No, nah, I don't think he's playing this week, Melissa, unfortunately. Um, when, the, when it's the knee that he was just off of re-entry with gets injured and a short week, mm-hmm. um, you're gonna see Hasty and you're gonna see McKinnon, uh, and maybe Walter off the practice squad. Yeah, and and we'll have more answers. We're gonna have a show on Wednesday still. To yeah, we are the Packer game, so we're 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 gonna have more answers. We we kind of wanted to focus today was this was an emergency podcast. We weren't even really gonna touch on the Seahawks game to be honest on Wednesday. Um, it was his knee, the same knee, I think. Same day. Okay. Um, yeah. So we, we weren't even really planning to touch on the Seahawks. We just, we decided to, rec- we decided to do this today because of all the news that happened today. Yeah. Um, yeah. but we will a hundred percent be back Wednesday, five 30 to preview the 49er Packer game. Yeah. Um, Yo, per, per, um, you got to pull up for one of these shows, bro. So we'll send you the link. We're going to talk. I'm going to DM you and everything. We'll get you on here. I think we, we, we need your sort of unfiltered, um 49ers um talk you know so so andrew for 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 the people on 49ers twitter that are here right yeah perk perk is our guy for something that's called rep that shit so if you catch yourself on a timeline in a in a dope fit like this sweater and perk gets a hold of it he's gonna he's gonna blast it out rep that shit and that's that's what perk does man and okay. also he's also the eviscerator of other teams fan bases so okay. green reaper is that's what it is. That's what that's what it is. So okay. shout out to shout out to Perk for joining, man. I appreciate you, bro. Every see, look, everybody knows. Look, I'm Jack for Thursday. Look, here it is. That's exactly what it is. If you catch yourself in a dope fit and you want to take a picture real quick, boom, you're gonna get you're gonna get hit that right there. Look, Green Bay fans got me banned. Yeah, Perk was going bad on them all last year, all last year. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, but yeah, so we'll be back Wednesday. You know, uh, to talk and everything as well. You know, um, you know, it felt necessary to talk about all this just because, you know, uh, so many moving parts. You know, a lot of the injury news and stuff like that. But um, yeah, man, like you guys got me hyped now. Like I wanna, I wanna go watch Green Bay's film and I wanna point out exactly 
where we can beat them. You know, I had somebody on one of the other shows like, oh, you did that film breakdown and you showed where to attack the corners, but they didn't do it. Well, unfortunately, we're not in on the game plan. Yeah, uh, yeah we, we don't have any bearing. Listen, right. I'm going to say this. If I had any bearing on what the 49ers did, they would be 0-8 right now. So let's just <laughs> – um, Oh, my God. But, um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so we will see you guys on Wednesday. And uh, Golden Domer 73, one game at a time. That's that's what that's it, it is at this point. That's it. We're, that's we're, not, we're, not, we're not worried about New Orleans yet. We're not worried about the bye week. Right now it's as a variant of what Bill Belichick said. Uh, we're on to Green Bay. I would be a sick play caller. I would be like, yo, jet sweep the Devo. Every, uh, run it again. Run it again. Well, no, dude, my, my, my secret – so the the secret is, and this this 100% works in the NFL because it works in Madden, uh, is you run the screen play to one side, get like 15 yards, and then just flip the play do the exact same thing and just do that all the way down the field. Boom. And then we get that kid from Little Giants, the annexation of Puerto Rico. Boom. Done. Done and done. Done. <laughs> all um, right, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Thank so you, guys. As always, yeah, as always, we appreciate you guys. Uh, Jason, go 49ers, huh? Let's go Niners. That's it. It's always that. Always that. We'll see you guys Wednesday at 5.30. Later.